get us started. And um, I know a few more people will pop in as we go. Um, so this week, like I said, it's week six. We'll be talking about uh, subject headings uh, and personal and corporate names. But before we get into that, did anyone have any questions about the most recent homework assignment? So you're all quiet. I'm going to assume that there aren't any questions about this most recent homework assignment with the 500 fields. Uh, they all looked really good. Um, let me go ahead and just pull that up. There were um, just a few things. And uh, the biggest one had to do with the 505 with Maeve Benchy. And because she wrote each title here and her name is, you know, she's overall the author, I, I probably wouldn't do a, um, I wouldn't include her name here. I would just, I just have it in the 245 and the 100. And, and then uh, the other thing was Dublin 4 is listed on the Verso page, but not the title page. And so without, I guess without actually having the whole work in front of me, I probably would not list that in the 505, but it's kind of, um, it's cataloger's judgment up to you. And let's see, the other, there was a few other little things. I had a few people who included a 508 for loyalty and death. And and that's cool. Um, the information is there. So that's another case of catalogers judgment. If you want to include it, you can. If you don't, that's OK. And then with the 521, the the age range, um, one in eight were probably your best choices because the item is specifically like it states like ages. Uh, the others would probably not be the best fit. So if there aren't any questions, we'll just dive into the, to today's reading. And before I get started going over that, um, are there any questions? So no questions about subject headings and personal and corporate names. OK, so we'll just we'll just get going then uh, a few weeks ago. Um, oh, I do have a question. Oh, it's just Allison saying good morning. Thank you. I appreciate that. It lets me know that, you know, you guys can hear me. <laughs> We don't need a repeat of last week where I forgot to, you know, click on the, the, the um, you know, go live button. So uh, a few weeks ago, you may remember hearing about how um, Library of Congress decided to change one of its subject headings, illegal aliens, to, I think, undocumented citizens, not quite sure, and, and the whole flap about that and people getting upset. Uh, that kind of has a little bit to do with what we'll be talking about today in, um, with subject headings. We won't be getting into anything quite that weighty, but if it's something you know you 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 might have noticed, and um, you know it's something that's good to keep on your radar because um, when that does go into effect, it will change all of our subject headings. So anyway. Uh, so you may have noticed that the um, the subject headings will start with the topical and geographic, and those are located in the 6XX fields. And for the most part, we're just going to do the 650 and the 651. And the 650 is just your topical headings, so uh, things like 
children's library or um, proposal writing for grants um, or like water management, things like that are a 650. And the 651, like I said, is for geographic headings. And those, those are, there's a lot more variety there than you think there would be. I, initially, you're probably thinking, oh, it's countries and, um, you know, it's also um, political entities like uh, Indian reservations or um, it's states, it's countries, it's cities. It can also be like geographic places. Like you'll notice that um, here I did feature um, the Flathead River. So it can be rivers, lakes, uh, whatever's there in the authority files. And these are, you know, they're pretty straightforward in a lot of ways. The subfields are the same. Uh, your X is your general subdivision. Your Z is your geographic. Your Y is the chronological subdivision, which is time, like 19th century or late 20th century, or it can be a, um, a range of dates. And then V is a form subdivision. And like I say in the reading, it's just, um, they just help make your overall topic uh, narrower. Um, you can see, looking back up at the examples, um, when I use uh, United States, um, if you were just to put United States there, that that's 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 a lot, <laughs> and it doesn't really help anyone, you know, narrow down what the book is about or what the item is about. And so, including another subfield here in X that tells us that it's um, not only about the United States, but social life and customs in the United States. Or here with the Indian Reservation, it's not just about the Indian Reservation, but it's about the history of the reservation as well. And one of the important things to remember is that they do require authority control. And we haven't talked about authority control a whole lot. We talked about it a little bit when we did um, series, when we worked with the 490 and the 8XX fields. And as you know, that's just the, the authorized official heading that um, organizes. It brings all of the like um, other terms that might be used for something. It brings them all together. And so there's just that one heading that um, everyone uses rather than um, you know, some people using America, some people using the United States or the United States of America. And so I've got a question here from Mary. I wonder why the 650 field often seems to be repeated several times when there are multiple general general subdivisions rather than using the X subfields several times with just one 650 field. And that's that's a good question. And if I'm interpreting that correctly, um, that means that they're just doing 650s, like rather than trying to have like maybe one or two long 650s, each one of those terms is broken out into its own 650. Is that what you're asking about, Mary? Okay. You know, I see that in records too, and I, I don't quite know what it is if it's a, if it's catalogers judgment if it's people not really being comfortable with um, assigning subject headings, subject headings can be kind of tricky if you're doing original cataloging um, because you're, you're really trying to get into what the item is about. And for some people, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's very subjective. So for some people, rather than trying to do a long string, uh, you know, they might, do a lot of um, you know really general ones, and and list them all individually, kind of more like like tagging, like tagging in Facebook or other social media. So it's not really wrong. It's in my opinion, it's not the preferred way, but that's my opinion. You have to do what's best for you in your library. Does that answer your question? Oh, one of the items on our assignment has four 650 fields and one 651. Well, let's bring up the assignment and take a look and see. 
Let's do that. Slide 22. Okay, thank you. So what? Oh, there we go. You know, working with two monitors can be really great sometimes, and sometimes it can be kind of a pain. Okay, so Authentic Alaska, Voices of Its Native Writers. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. It'll just be a moment while it downloads. Okay, it'll be just, a, it's being kind of slow today. Let's, oh, my computer is being a pain, okay. Okay, Mary, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Um, but until I actually look at the item itself, it's not, let's try doing it this way. Um. Oh, it came up, okay. No, and that was not the one I wanted. Sorry about that. There we go. Slide 22, and you guys can see this, right? Good, thank you. Yep. Okay, so what Mary is talking about here is we have, let me just get a nifty little highlighter here. She's talking about this right in here. Okay, that doesn't help at all. about these subheading, subject headings, Eskimos, Alaska, social life and customs, Eskimos, Alaska, biography. Um, and it looks like these are listing like a, a whole string there where it says like one right here, um, that would be the first heading and all of that Eskimos, Alaska, social life and customs would all be in one 650. Um, the Eskimos is the main one, so that would be the A. Alaska is a Z because it's a geographic heading. And then social life and customs would also be, uh, would be an X. And the reason why Alaska comes between the two is because social life and customs can't be uh, geographically divided. Um, and I'm really not sure what that means or even how to explain it. I knew at one point in time. Um, and am I answering your question, Mary? Like why it has the four, six, four 650 fields and one 651? And it has that 651, it would, because Alaska, um, because social conditions can't be geographically divided. Um, Alaska has to come first. And you can have as many 650s or 651s as you, as you feel are necessary to describe the item. Okay, why can't the first two be combined into one field? Eskimos, because we've got this 
um, form heading of, I think biography is a form heading. I can never remember. Um, and so they, I guess you could do Eskimos, Alaska, Social Life and Customs biography. It, it kind of comes down to, I think, you know, personal preference, um, how complicated you want to make that heading. Because what the first one is saying, it's about Eskimos in Alaska and their social life and customs. And then the second one is saying it's specifically a biography about um, Eskimos in Alaska. And then the third one is saying it's even more detailed. Um, it's saying Athabascan Indians in Alaska and their social life and customs. And then Athabascan Indians and a biog it's a biography. And so it kind of just depends on how long you want to make those headings and you know how complicated you want to get. Um, I learned that you kind of start out really general and then you slowly move into you move into something ones that are more exact. And, and I like to do a mixture of general and exact because um, I think I, I think it it. It gives people kind of more choices when they're searching. Also, Eskimos don't call themselves that anymore. <laughs> that's that's a really good point. And that's one of the things I think we get into a little bit that. Um, and what I was talking about at the beginning with illegal aliens is that LC, which sets subject headings, they are slow. They're updating them. They change them as it goes. Um, as terms change, you know, with African Americans, and that's the example um, I use. Let me... Oh, we actually had a question on this yesterday. Both Inuit and Eskimo are still authorized records, and that's from Allison. Okay, I didn't know that. Eskimo for general materials. And then I'm assuming, okay, Inuit for the specific tribe. And that makes sense. And and you'll see things like that where, you know, they, like a group maybe doesn't call itself Eskimos anymore. And, but LC hasn't caught up quite yet. Like for years and years, they used the term cookery. And you used it, I think, with cooking books, cookbooks. I mean, does anyone say cookery? I I, I don't say cookery. Most people don't say cookery. And they finally, about two years ago, changed it from cookery to cooking. So it's a work in progress. And it's and those are good questions. And, and, and they are things, um, if you do work with, um, uh, I, you know, my old job, I cataloged a lot of materials that were created by our um, Native American study um, division at the Office of Public Instruction in Montana. And and so we had a lot of Indian related materials, um, things about tribes, things, um, um, things written by tribes. And so that we it required a certain amount of cultural sensitivity. Uh, you know, you wanted to make sure you had the right tribal name or the right tribal affiliation. So Mary and, and Allison both bring up um, a really good point there about um, making sure you are being culturally sensitive and culturally aware. And Allison did say, oh, let's go look at the scope notes. So this jumps ahead a little bit, which is perfect, and that's OK. Um, like with subject headings, how do you know, um, or with, sorry, with series headings, how do you know what's authorized and what's not authorized? Well, you get to go to the Library of Congress. And we looked at this a couple of weeks ago, where you search the authorities. And this, um, you can't look at, it won't take you to broader terms, but it will take you to narrower terms. And we'll just look at a record. And Allison, is this, excuse me, is this Eskimo or Inuit that is the scope note for? Inuit, thank you. Let's look up Inuit, Inuit. Okay, so. You guys can all see this, right? You're going to see we have a million and one choices for Inuit. And what I usually do is I start by clicking on this 
this lovely red button here because it says authorized references and notes. And so it, you know for sure that this heading is, it's all right to use Inuit. And um, you'll see we've got some narrower terms, um, older Inuit and then Inupiat. I hope I didn't butcher that. So if I did and anyone's offended, I'm really sorry. But for some records, you'll have a scope note. And the scope note basically kind of tells you how, how this heading should be um, used. Or sometimes you'll see um, how else to search for the heading, um, how else you might see it. And so here, this explains to us how you can use the term Inuit that it is uh, limited to the indigenous Arctic peoples of um, Greenland, Canada, and Northern Alaska. And, you know, and, and some specific um, regions here. And then um, when the individual groups cannot be identified, then you can use Eskimo. And so looking at here, um, they used Eskimo, I think, just as kind of a general broad view, because a lot of people, if you're looking for um, materials on Native Americans in Alaska, you're probably going to search Eskimo, because that's a common use term. And then because they knew this specific group, they went in and applied that um, Athabascan Indians. So are there any questions so far? Okay, Diane, I use the 690 field quite a bit for local subject headings. Um, they're not usually in Library of Congress. So is there a guide for the correct way to build a local subject heading? And that, that's a really good question. Um, I don't really think there is. We can, um, Library of Congress does have materials um, and there's, there's definitely books and articles you can read on subject headings, how you can use those, um, how you can create your own. Um, what, I, what I've done in the past when I've kind of had to um, build my own, like I haven't been able to find a, a pre-made string, uh, I look for patterns. Let me, I look for patterns. Um, I'll find something similar, like I said, and look for patterns here, um, like, um, you know, things like making sure that the geographic is in the right place. And and that's really not answering your question. Um, like I said, I kind of just look for patterns. Uh, for example, I've had to work with a lot of materials here where um, with local organizations. And they, of course, are not, they don't have LC records. And so I try to pull up. Um, similar organizations and just look at the way that heading is constructed. And let's see here. And if you go into the Library of Congress, they do have um, a lot of information here uh, for cataloging, you know, their programs, things they their standards, and let's see if this is here. There are some some guides here, like subject headings, the subject headings manual. And looking through here, this can give you, I think, some insight. It's a lot to wade through um, for different types of headings and how they can be used. Okay, often mine are for Russian villages. So I understand what you're saying about looking for patterns. Okay, good, good. And if you're really confused about what I'm saying right now, that's that's okay. We've gone into a little bit more detail than I've planned on. But that's part of why I like doing these discussions is so you can ask questions not only about the reading, but about things you're noticing and, and questions about the assignment too. So if there aren't any other questions, 
Oh, okay, I got another question here. I noticed that Hummingbird Nest has CIP information including both juvenile fiction and fiction. Is it necessary to use two 650 fields to show this or can you choose the one you want? Okay, I'm gonna pull up that example here so we all can see. Let's see here, okay. So, and you, you probably have noticed I haven't talked about CIP data a whole lot because one, I don't work with materials that do that, have CIP data. And two, because um, this is information that's produced kind of before your resource has officially gone into circulation, um, changes still can be made between the time that this information is produced and you get it. So it's not always the most accurate, um, but they are records produced by LC and they're based kind of on that pre-publication um, item. And so here we've got juvenile fiction and then we have hummingbirds fiction and stories in rhyme. And so this first one, this is from the adult list, Hummingbirds, Juvenile Fiction. Um, these second two, those brackets tell us that they're from the juvenile list. Uh, LC, if you're not aware, has a list of juvenile headings and they're, um, they're simpler. They use things like, um, well, instead of using swine to describe pigs, I think they actually use pigs. And, and so here, yes, it's saying the same thing, like hummingbirds fiction is saying the same thing as hummingbirds juvenile fiction, except they took out juvenile. Um, you know, again, and I know this drives people crazy when I say it's catalogers judgment, but it really is catalogers judgment. Um, it's really up to you and your audience. Um, if you've got a lot of, a lot of kids, like if you're a public library and you have a lot of kids, you probably would want to maintain that the juvenile heading. If not, then, um, you know, you could just go ahead and do hummingbirds juvenile fiction. Does that answer your question, Mary? Okay, Mary is saying that makes sense to me because we put, put kids books in Dewey, but adult books in LC. Yeah, you know, and again, you know, what you decide to do there, it depends on what your library does and how you organize things. And, you know, while, while our patrons maybe, maybe don't necessarily understand um, the MARC record and don't necessarily look at the MARC record, I think I've said this in the past, a lot of what we do is for other, other librarians who are looking at these records. And, you know, if you look at something and you see Hummingbird's fiction, you, you know, it, you're like, oh, okay, that's a children's book and it belongs in our Dewey section. So let's go back to um, ours, let's see, where did I put the reading? No. Oh, I know where I put the reading. Sorry. Where did I put the reading? Okay, we'll just pull it up again. Oh, is that the right one? No. Yes, it is the right one. Sorry. I have no excuses for my absent-mindedness. Uh, okay, and here we go. We've got, um, we talk about children's subject headings. And um, again, you can kind of see how, you know, the variation here. And and um, back to our discussion um, about Eskimos and Inuit. Um, because terms do change over time, you know, you do want to check those subject headings um, if you see them in CIP information because, you know, you might get something that was published a few years ago that's older and it might have the term Afro-Americans. Well, that's that's not the correct heading right now. It's African-Americans. 
And so if there aren't any more questions about um, the 650 and the 651, then we can move on to personal names, which are the 100, 700, and 600 headings, 600 fields. Um, you use the 600 field if you're doing, for example, biography about someone, um, Benjamin Franklin, for example. You would put his name in the 600. And so the 100 is, um, that's where you put um, the creator of what you're create of what you're cataloging. And if there's numerous creators, like if there's illustrators or you're doing a movie or um, a book with a lot of authors or editors, you can put, you put the first person in the 100 and then the other names are gonna go in the 700. And I've listed the indicators here. Uh, again, these kind of just tell us um, what type of name it is and how the computer should display that. And then we have subfields. And the ones that we you'll see a lot are um, the A for the personal name, that C for um, titles and other words associated with a name, and until recently, I didn't see a lot of um, subfield Cs, but I've come across a couple in the last couple of days where there's um, that C can be used, like you can put like someone's occupation in there, uh, like editor, like film editor or music composer. Uh, if there's a lot of name, a lot of records of the same name, uh, a cataloger when they're creating that authority file might use the occupation to differentiate um, between. Hans Christian Andersen, the author, and Hans Christian Andersen, the engineer, for example. Um, the relator term, and then um, which ex which tells us how that individual is connected to the item we're cataloging, and then Q, the fuller form of the name. So, for example, um, let's see. Um, I usually use the name Allison Badger, and I keep it very simple. I don't always use my middle name. But on um, for a thesis I wrote a number of years ago, I believe it's Allison Jean Badger. And so for most of the materials, if we were going to catalog, create an authority record for me, because I mainly use Allison Badger, Allison Badger would be that A, but then someone could say do a Q, a subfield Q, and Allison Jean. And are there any questions so far? Okay. And again, uh, as with um, the series and the um, the subject headings, you know, we go back to the Library of Congress website and look for those authorized headings. And. Uh, we've uh, here we have in the example we have Michael Sullivan, and you can see his authorized heading includes uh, a date here, a date of birth, because there's several Michael Sullivans, and we can actually pull that up. Let's get out of here, go back to here, and I can show you how that works. And so, yeah, when you have a name that has a lot of different um, records, a lot of different books or whatever that are associated with it, um, or there's a lot of them, you know, we'll find ways to try and differentiate using dates, um, names of works. And so, oh, here's our Michael Sullivan. And it looks like there's references there. Oh, maybe this changed. So you just click through, you keep clicking, and it looks like that's a different, this is a different one, not the one I thought. So, and this information, sometimes there's not a lot of information here. Sometimes there is, uh, you know, on works um, they've written, um, music they've composed or bands they've been in, other forms of their name. Uh, how they, how that librarian who created this record verified the right name and or places they've taught at that kind of thing and so 
if you are cataloging something that has or you have something in front of you and you go in to check the name and you know there's a lot of Michael Sullivan's uh, you can use this information to make sure that you have the right Michael Sullivan and that you're going to you're going to put the right authority record on your record and sometimes it's not you can't always tell and you can't find anything that tells you and so I usually err on the side of caution and and don't um I'll, I, I won't use an authorized form of the name. I'll just use whatever's on the item itself. And does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Oh, you have the wrong guy. This one was born in July, the other's in August. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, thank you. Um, but that kind of just demonstrates um, the point that, you know, you do have to be careful that LC does provide a lot of ways to differentiate between multiple names and, you know, got to make sure that you got the right birthday there. And they were both 1967. That was what was confusing me. So. And we can go ahead. Um, like I said, um, the names of people who perform other roles besides the author, um, like editors, compilers, uh, they can go into the 700 fields. If you have a children's book that has an illustrator, they should go into the 700 field as well. And we've got um, multiple authors here, an example with multiple authors. And for a book with only an illustrator, you, you would just put them in the 100 because they created all of the content in that book, or at least you're assuming they are, unless you see something that uh, indicates otherwise. Uh, another example here, uh, just how this works with authors and multiple illustrators. And then with things like audiobooks, uh, you have the author and you have them in the 100 because they did create the um, the content, but um, there was a narrator, and so you would include you would stick the narrator, <clears throat> excuse me, in the seven hundred. And here's an example of someone with just one name. So you can see that that indicator is a zero; it's not a one. And again, that's just telling the computer that there's no last name there. That it's just one word. And we can also use, like I said, we can use the names um, in the 600. Uh, for example, if it's a book about like Franz Kafka, you can, and then um, this is, this D is also part of his um, authorized heading. Then, um, you know, what's the book about is the criticism and the interpretation. And Rachel's got a question. So narrator goes in the 511 and 700. Correct. And you don't, because something's in the 511, you don't necessarily need to put it um, in the 700. It kind of, again, it's catalogers judgment or dealer's choice. Um, it just depends on, you know, your library and your community, your patrons. You know, some people like to be able to go in and look for maybe a specific narrator or with movies. You know, they want to see something by a specific director or a music composer. So does that answer your question? I will say, um, for a, if you're going to do like a 700, I think you do have to mention the name previously in the record somewhere. Like it has to be in the 511 then. So just because you've done a 511 doesn't mean you need to do a 700, but if you're going to do a 700, then it needs to be like in a 511 or a 508 or in the 245. Okay? Cool. So that brings us to corporate names. So uh, we talked a little bit about this, like I think with movies a little bit, when we talked about like distributors and publishers, um, you know, sometimes they're very involved in the creation of a movie. Um, 
So corporate names can be companies, they can be governments, organizations, and you may you may come across items where that corporate name is in the 110 and you know like with the 100 that's just telling us that they uh, were responsible for creating the information in that resource that content and then if you want to uh, for an additional access point you know sometimes with publishers or sponsors or distributors you may want to stick that in a 710 um, because again it just gives people another way to search for something and find something and the indicators for the 110 and the 710 are identical. And again, you can also include a corporate entity in a 610 field. Um, for a lot of the materials I catalog about, excuse me, state agencies, um, you know, if I were to do something that is about the Nebraska Library Commission, then I would do a 610 for the Nebraska Library Commission because it's about the organization itself. And we have um, three different indicators we use. And we have inverted name, um, the jurisdiction name, and the name in direct order. And the jurisdiction name is used with governments, with um, if you've got a list of agencies and the subdivisions within the agency. And then um, the name in direct order, that's just something like, um, like Buena Vista Home Video or um, just the name of the company and the, as you see it on the item. And again, you know, that second indicator tells us the source, um, where you got it from, what list. And if it's something that's local and isn't on a list anywhere, you can just leave it blank. That's that's OK. And again, the subfields are the same. Your, your corporate name is your A, your main body. And then the B is um, if there's a subordinate unit, which, you know, like, um, like the Department of Corrections. There might be within that. There might be um, parole. I don't know, but that's just an example. And again, you can use a relationship, a relator term. And we haven't talked much about those. That's kind of a new RDA thing. And that's kind of to tell us how names are related, names and companies are related to the resource you're working on. Sometimes it's not always obvious. Um, and there's actually, like everything else, there's a list that those terms come from. Let's just bring that up here. Oh, we don't want code, we want term. And you don't have these don't have to be um, on an eye uh, in a record. They're they're optional. And if it's not clear what the relationship is, then you don't need to do um, list a relator or anything like that. But if you are, they do need to come from this list because these are the authorized terms. So you can see we have things like author. And it really, it gets broken down to an author in quotations or text abstracts, author of the afterword, author of dialogue, author of introduction. And so depending on the name that's as associated with the item um, and how detailed you really want to get. And these have changed. They've evolved quite a bit since RDA started. Uh, the list wasn't nearly as detailed when it first started, but it's gotten a lot more. And so this brings us down to some more examples. And um, this is what I was talking about with um, with direct um, the direct terms, the direct headings, where you just you basically copy what you see on the item. Um, we have here we have the American Library Association, and within that, the Commission on Freedom of equality and access to information. And you can see what it looks like on the in the CIP data.
And this brings us um, to what I was talking about with corporate entities and how they can have a role in the creation of a film. Here we have Hollywood Pictures Home Video. And the authorized heading does include firm in parentheses. Again, it's, it's a way to differentiate this heading from any others that might be there. And you can see where we found that on the item itself. And this is all information that should be coming from the item itself. It's, it's nothing that you should have to go out and look for. Sometimes you might have to, to make sure you, you know, you've got the right Michael Sullivan, um, you know, if there's not a lot of information there in the LC record. And, and here's an example of where we've used Library of Congress as a 610. Um, with that two, that tells us it's, in, it's the direct order. The zero tells us it's from the LC um, subject heading list. And then, you know, it's been subdivided. So it's, this is telling us that it's about the history of the Library of Congress. So that is uh, the reading for uh, this week. Um, before I go and talk about the assignment that will be due next week, um, are there any questions? And there doesn't seem to be any questions, so either you all get what's going on or I've hopelessly confused you and you don't even know where to begin. And um, before we do talk about this assignment, let me just mention that next week um, we're going to double up um, and do the 00x and fixed fields and copy cataloging. And I don't believe there's an assignment for each one of these. I think there might just be one assignment. If not, I will make it just one assignment. Um, there will be a final, um, your final final assignment is actually an evaluation of the class, a survey. And so there won't be too much there, but I did want to give you a heads up that, um, we'll have a double reading next week. And they're both, I know the copy cataloging one is very short, so there's not much there. So let's pull up the assignment. Okay, so this week, Okay, I do have a question here. I don't think it was clear on the last instruction that not all of the books would have all three fields, a 1XX, a 6XX, and a 7XX. Thank you, Mary. You're correct. Um, not every item you come across is always going to have a 1XX, a 6XX, and a 7XX. You may have things that have um, a 1XX and no... Um, there would be 650s and 651s, of course, but not necessarily a 610. Or, um, you know, you may not have a 1XX, but have a 7XX because there's no author. Um, maybe it's a compilation um, with an editor. Or um, it's a movie. And, but... I think almost everything you'll catalog will have like a 650 or a 651, not always both, just kind of depends on the subject matter. And you, you may or may not use that 610 or see that 610 a whole lot. It just kind of depends on what you're cataloging. And so does that make sense to everyone, that you're not necessarily always going to come across something that has like a 1XX? Um, a 610 and 7XX fields. You know, you may not have 7XX fields if it's a novel, for example. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad people are clear on that. At least one person is.
So this week's assignment is we're just going to go through and you'll notice that in all these books you have CIP data and they all list the subject headings. And so you're not having to go and figure out subject headings. Um, basically what you'll be doing is taking the CIP data and, and transferring it into a MARC record. How would it look in that MARC record? So while I have another question, so while Hummingbird Nest has 650 fields, it doesn't have a 610, correct? And let me go and pull that up. And, and so yes, um, because it's not about anyone, there wouldn't be a 610, which is what that 610 or that 600 is used for. Um, is if it's about um, a particular corporate entity or about a person. And so if it's not about a person or a corporate entity, it wouldn't have a 600 or a 610. Okay, is that clear as mud? Okay, good, <laughs> good. And if you guys have questions while you're do working on the assignments, you know, feel free to email me. I know I say that every week, um, but I'll repeat it again. You know, let me know if you've got questions. And and next week, you know, if we're still really confused about what's going on um, when I review the assignment, you know, we can talk about this again. So if there aren't any more questions, it's about 10 to 11. And this is not the one I wanted. So if there aren't any more questions, then we can go ahead and um, get going. Um, it does look like, I will say, it looks like there is one example here, one question that um, will have you do um, six, a 6XX field um, for specific subject headings, not all of them, just the ones that are numbered here. And then it looks like at the bottom here, you'll be doing, um, like I said, you may not have um, a 1XX, a 6XX, and a 7XX. That's really hard to say fast. You may not see all of those um, here, but what you see, you know, is what you would create a mark record for. So if there are any more questions or comments, we can go ahead and um, get going. So thanks for coming. Thanks for your questions. Good, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, if you're hopelessly confused, email me, we'll, we'll work it out, okay? So thanks, and I will talk to you guys next week.